Uh, questions for Coach Huggins. Start with Greg Hunter. So, Bob, obviously, now that you got a victory under your belt, just, just just the general attitude, I mean, yourself, your players, a little more bounce in the step the last couple of days. What have you noticed? What are you trying to say, Greg? I had no bounce in my step before? No, well, no, uh, not you. Maybe a player or two. We were just I, – I just did the – whatever that was, uh, Big 12 call or whatever, and – trying to explain to those guys what our travel's like. And so, I mean, and you guys know that, you know, we fly to Lubbock four hours, play a game, turn around, fly somewhere else for about another four hours. In the meantime, uh, like we're, we're going to fly to Stillwater, then we're going to play, and then we're going to get on a plane and fly 40 minutes to Manhattan. And then, you know, you know, people say sometimes, look like your guys are a little bit tired. Hey, follow us around for a while. You know, you're, you're, I'm tired. I don't play anymore. So it's rough. It's rough. It's just the, the travel in this league for us is brutal. And I think uh, what's happened with the new leagues, I think, particularly if they, if they have a divide, uh, that really helps us. Really, really helps us. Time changes, you know, we wouldn't have to do the time change thing and everything else that goes with it. So they talk to you about what divisions uh, will look like in the future? You know, for some reason, they don't talk to me. I don't understand it, but no, they don't, they don't say much to me. I'm not sure where that's done at. I don't know if it's which what level it's done at. Johnny and Tony. Now, second time around with Oklahoma State, what do you see different from him from the uh, first time you played? Probably maturity. Um, you know, they're they're awfully young, and I think uh, just I think more comfortable with with the system you know mike's done an unbelievable job to to do what he's done uh with the guys knowing that they can't play in the tournament in the, mm -hmm. in the conference tournament or the ncaa tournament and, and for them to still compete the way they've competed it's it's uh he's done a remarkable job look at it for starters they go on more four out now they've always played some four out okay Depends on what depends on what you you want to say likely is, you know, is he is he a power forward? Uh, I can remember back when he first came in the league, he was a point guard. Yeah, and and now he's more of a he's he's always been a guy to kind of put his head down, drive it at the rim, but but he's you know he's he's doing it against bigger people now and being successful against bigger people. He's just so, I mean, if you say he's if he's a perimeter guy, then they're four out. Okay. He's kind of a unique matchup because he's smaller than the guys that, that are guarding him, but he can go in and out, right? He's, he, well, he really can drive, and he's got great strength. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can he can put people on his shoulder and pretty much take them where he wants to take them. Justin Jackson. Coach, uh, you know, for everything that's been made the last few weeks with, with the streak in the span of two games, uh, with, you know, the Iowa State game being the first one, and then if you guys go on Saturday and win Saturday, in the span of two games, you guys could go from, like, 10th place to 6th place, which, you know, is kind of an unbelievable jump. But I, I'm guessing maybe with, you know, obviously – you deal with the, the big 12 games and scouting. I'm guessing that's probably not maybe unbelievable to you because I mean, you know how competitive, you know, one through 10, this, the, this league is. Well, it's, it's a, it's a really hard league. And, and, and as I 
I just said on that conference call, I, I went in, sat down at the table the first time and uh, I'm looking around and I start counting and 70% of the coaches had been in the final, coached in the final four, had taken a team to the final four. No other league does that. None. And, you know, the coaching is, is terrific. And then when you, when you look at it, which I ought to get a copy of it for all of you guys, because it would be, it would be really good uh, for you to, to, to look at. We've had more, more number one picks. We've had more first round picks. We've had more people play in the NBA than any other conference. Think about that. You know, you hear all the stuff about the big 10 or the, or the ACC or the SEC, whatever. You know, that little conference has had the best players, according to, to the NBA draft. I guess maybe two, so I guess from more of an analytical standpoint, because the, the teams, I don't know if parity is the right word or not, but because the teams may be more evenly matched, you can teams in the Big 12 can sustain a losing streak maybe and still be in contention as opposed to if a team, if the league had just one or good two teams and they're way ahead of everyone else. Is I mean, the fact that this is such a competitive league, it, it kind of affords you the chance to get back into it in a, in a better way, even though the games aren't easy, obviously, but. No, they're, they're, they're not easy. They're, they're hard. And the travel for us is brutal. You go down there to our guys, our coaching staff, and everybody who travels with us and everybody's got a cold. I mean, it's, you don't, you don't understand until you get back at five o'clock in the morning. And you've flown four hours. You flew flown four hours out, and four hours back. You know, I, I give you, I give you what they do. So, so now we're going to play Oklahoma State. We so we fly out there, play that game. Then we're going to get on a plane and we're going to fly to Manhattan, Kansas. How long do you think that flight is? Forty minutes. Yeah. 40 minutes. See, that's what everybody else does. Right. Well, we're doing four hours. They're doing 40 minutes. It's about four hours to get back from Manhattan, right? No, it won't. it's not four hours, but it's, it's, it's probably two and a half, I would guess. Yeah. Kevin Tinder. You mentioned um, with Seth Wilson in the last game, when, when he missed the shot in the second half, you took him out, not because it was a bad shot, but because you wanted to get some more veterans in. You were in a position to win that game, obviously, one that you needed. For your younger guys, when does the decision come to let them play through some of those critical moments? Is it a feel thing with the game? Is it you know, kind of a compilation of everything they've done in practice? How do you end up making that call? You try to put the guys on there that you think can win the game for you. I, I've never really worried about whether it was a freshman or, or whether it was a senior. I mean, I've had seniors screw up games. Uh, so, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's that. I mean, I think that, I think at that point in time, we put a guy in who handled the ball a little bit better because the pressure was coming. Which is, is going to happen. I think, I think from here on out, because just because of the, what, what you said initially, everybody has got a chance to, to make the NCAA tournament still. So, you know, I think, I think there, there'll be a lot more pressure at the end of games. Are some of your freshmen, your younger guys, thinking specifically Seth, Kobe, close to, Playing through some of those pressure situations. 
depends on if one of our older guys get knocked out again or not, I guess, maybe. Uh, I mean, it, it depends. It, it, it depends on the situation. It, it totally depends on the situation. They don't have to have the ball. I mean, we, we could put Seth in. I mean, I, I have all the confidence in the world Seth's going to make free throws. But, you know, I'm not sure that, that, that I want him. I, I want him double teamed, uh, you know. So, so you put him in a position where he most likely wouldn't get double teamed if he got the ball. Ashton Slaughter. Hey, Coach. Um, Ashton Slaughter from the Ocala, Oklahoma State. Um, I'm actually not asking a question regarding tomorrow's game, um, but a project I'm working on um, about Eddie Sutton as he would turn 86 um, next month. And so my only question for you, Coach, is, you know, if you had describe Eddie Sutton in one word, um, what would that one word be, sir? Competitive. John Antonio. Uh, to, to what Justin was saying before, uh, there's an opportunity here for you with, with the, the games coming up because you've got teams right ahead of you in the standings. Is that how you're looking at that? If you play well, you can leapfrog a couple teams here and get right back in the mix? We're, we're very transparent with our guys. I, mean, I, I know some people don't believe in – that maybe it puts pressure on them. I, 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 I would rather um, have them feel a little bit of pressure than come to me after the fact and say, why didn't you tell us that? I think we would have played harder or uh, paid more attention or whatever if we had known what was on the line. I want them to know what's on the line. Well, one more here. You know, before the league schedule started, you know, there was talk of the, of the Big 12 maybe getting eight teams in the NCAA tournament. And then you look at how uh, the, the season's gone and everybody's pinning losses on each other. You're a little concerned that maybe you guys are devouring each other. I mean, you, you start looking at these loss totals here, and now they're talking like, well, okay, you look at the records and you say, well, maybe they only get five or, or, or whatever. You think there's a little bit of, you know, devouring going on there? Well, contrary to some other leagues, we're playing quality people every game. Contrary to uh, some of those other leagues who, and I mean, uh, let's be honest, they did it in the Big East. They did it in the Big East religiously. I mean, they had the best guys, played the best guys, because mm -hmm. they, didn't, they didn't worry about them not getting in a tournament. And then the people who they thought had a chance, and then there were people they didn't think had much of a chance. And and so, you know, they they worked it out to where that's why there was always so many teams in the in the NCAA tournament from that league. Yeah. Mike Trangizi was a very brilliant guy in terms of of scheduling and, and why he scheduled the way he scheduled. You know, uh, our league is because we have so few people, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and, and take, take Oklahoma state out of the, out of the equation. Now we're down to nine people. I mean, that, you're, right. you're going to beat each other up. You look at those win loss records though, and some people will, uh, but then you, you look at that and you say, well, okay. Uh, the league leaders have got, four losses now but then then you look at oklahoma state they're 11 and 12 and then their net ranking is 61 so i guess it's whatever one you look at what number is going to be at the end there for, for how they choose this you would hope that the committee the committee's knowledgeable and you would hope that the committee would study yeah uh, which i think for the most part they do We just got to win, you know, it's, it's, we just, we just, we, we gave games away. Um, obviously Taz going down certainly didn't, didn't help us any. 
not having him at the end of the Baylor game, of which we could have, should have won if he's in the game. Him not having him the following game, mm-hmm. he's such a big part of our team. You know, so you could, you could, you take, you take somebody like him out of virtually any of those people's teams. They're going to struggle if they're if they're playing a like team. Yeah. Kind of to your point, the bottom team in this league, Iowa State, has a 39 net ranking. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. It hasn't the, the, the net hasn't turned out the way that I think everybody envisioned. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's almost become more like the Sagarin. Yeah. But it's the metric they're using. Well, there was there, you know, you had so many people complaining when when the, it was basically uh, the a committee that did it, and the committee who had biases, and so you know, let's do this thing mathematically. I was on, I was on it, I was on a committee, John, and and, and it, it's it's not near what we drew up for it to be. I don't know how it got to where it is, but Mike Slive chaired the committee and then did a marvelous job. Uh, and you had, it was, it was predominantly made up of coaches, although there were, you know, there were other people on the committee, but this, this isn't, this isn't what we, this is more leaning towards the Sagarin, which Everybody, I think, wanted the Sagarin to be a part of it, but they didn't want, nobody wanted the Sagarin deal only per se, if that makes any sense to you. Bob Hertzel, go ahead. Yeah, hey, uh, Bob. uh, How are you looking at the uh, point guard position now, personnel-wise, playing time, and, and, and how to use them? And how does their role change when Sean's on, uh, not Sean, when, when, when uh, uh, Taz is on the floor as compared to when he's not on the floor? Because he does do a lot of ball handling at that time. Well, it, it, it changes a lot. And we're, I think we're fortunate that that's where we've got a lot of guys capable at that position. Hey, Bob, it depends. I think Keaty's our best defender. I think Kobe probably is our, our most steady, you know, he's he, for a freshman, he doesn't, he's not as loose with the ball and we put Malik in there when we have to score and, and he does a great job. And, you know, we're trying to run him off of that flat ball screen and, and either get it at the rim himself or, or get it to Taz or, or Sean or um, somebody else. So, it depends. It depends on the situation of the game. If 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 somebody is is hurting us, uh, a perimeter guy, we got to have Keedy in the game because he's far and away our best defender. Are you a different team depending upon who's on the floor? Yeah, I think anybody is. I mean, everybody has their strengths. Everybody has their weaknesses. I don't. I don't think anybody's immune to that. You know, I mean, Bob, you 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 look back. I mean, I I had Kenyon Martin, Jermaine Tate, Pete Michael on a front line, and I had to Mark Johnson, either Kenny Setterfield or Steve Logan at guard. But if I took one of those guys out, if I if I took say I take Jermaine Tate out, well, I'm gonna probably put in Donald Little, who was a six foot eleven. He was a great shot blocker, but he didn't bring what Jermaine Tate brought. You know, I mean, it's anytime anytime that you you change what's what's working to try to make it better, in a lot of instances, you make it worse.
Okay, we'll finish off with the two Gregs. Go ahead, Mr. Carey. Bob, last time you played these guys, you were 21 of 22 at the line, and you've obviously tremendously improved on free throws in Big 12 play. What does that come from? And I guess how rewarding is that to you? Did these guys kind of take it personal, some of the shortcomings that they had at the charity stripe and non-conference? Well, we, we, shoot, we shoot a lot of free throws. We shoot a lot of free throws after practice. And, and we do have guys that that come in. I mean, they, they, they come in the facility, they shoot free throws uh, during the day when they have time. They stay after practice. We're not one of those teams that as soon as, you know, the final whistle blows for practice, everybody sprint to the locker room to get changed. We have guys who stay. They stay, spend time. I think it's, I think they deserve all the credit because they have put the time in. Greg Hunt. So, Bob, to follow up with Greg Carey's question a little bit, in terms of the previous game, you guys obviously played well overall. Jalen had 22. What did you guys do best that game? What What do you need to replicate tomorrow? We made shots. Jalen started the game off, made two or three threes to start the game, which, which kind of, you know, I think got everybody going a little bit. Malik did a great job of finishing the game. And – you know, Taz coming back is a is a huge plus for us. It's a huge plus. I mean, he's a guy who can create his own. That's kind of rare. Go ahead, Justin. You can finish this up. Coach, uh, on Taz, uh, the other night you guys were talking about uh, cardio with him was uh, the, the main issue. So I'm just guessing over these last – you know, two or three days in practice? Has it just been keeping him in practice? Has it been getting him on the treadmill, on the bike, uh, combination? Uh, what, what's what's kind of been done to try to get, get him back into uh, basketball shape? It's hard to get in basketball shape if you don't play basketball. I mean, it's, it's uh, you can get on the, on the treadmill and the, the bike and whatever, but it's, it's the stop and the start, and, you know, the, the run and the jump and the sliding it's it's a different it's a different cardio taz is a smart guy and taz taz understands and and i know that uh, bj and 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 doc have sat down with him and talked to him about it and he understands it and, and he wants to play and he wants to be a really good player and he wants to lead our team so Taz is not a guy you got to follow around, make sure he's doing the right things. He's going to do the right things. Hey, Coach, thank you very much. Appreciate the time. Thanks, guys.